Hello, praise the Lord, brethren, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I proclaim Merry Christmas to you, Merry Christmas to you. The season is again here and we appreciate God for sending his son Jesus Christ to be born here, be like one of us and be able to save us. And so we praise the Lord for this Christmas and Merry Christmas that we have reached this time. And so we give thanks to God for that day, Father God and for the season. Father God, we thank you for this season, for Christmas. You prepared prayer and you sent your son to come, be born of a Virgin Mary, and become our savior. We pray the Lord you bless us as we celebrate, but we celebrate with meaning in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God, brethren, and we thank God that has given us another opportunity. Last year, we celebrated. Years past, we have celebrated Christmas, and every year we do. Come December, people begin thinking about Christmas, and the season, the day comes, 25th of December. And people celebrate. And so Christmas is the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so the reason why we sing happy birthday to the Lord Jesus Christ, it is his birthday. And so we celebrate as one and world over, regardless of what people are, regardless of which nations, regardless of which religions, this season is felt. Even when people have not gone to church, even when the people have not gone to a worship place, but they celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank God that this year is winding up, but Christmas is here. And so I invite you to share with me a few things about the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. But just like it has always been, we shall read a biblical text on our basis. And so that as we celebrate the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a basis in God's word. And this we are going to base, there are four gospels of Matthew, of Mark, of Luke and John. But let us base on the gospel according to Luke. And we just want to read a few verses and then we're going to base out upon those ones. And we shall go to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ as we energize ourselves in God's word, as we entrench ourselves in God's word. What was God's intention? about sending his son to come and be born here. What do we celebrate in Christmas? And so in chapter two, the Bible says that in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Grinius was the governor of Syria. And all people went to register, each to his own town. I like this, each to their own town. They went back to their villages, wherever, to their towns and registered. And verse four, our basis. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be registered, and verse five, to be registered with Mary, he betrothed, who was with the child, actually pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Pray the Lord, brethren. This is the message. Now you read the entire chapter 2 of Luke, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. You read Matthew chapter 2, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and he's born at a time when King, when the king, the emperor had given an instruction, a command, has issued a decree, everyone go and register in your home towns. And each one went, Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem and registered there. And so we celebrate 25th. 
Now, for me, it's a celebration. And I know it is also for you a celebration. Some people question about the date, of whether, it, whether it was 25th, whether it was December. But one thing that I know, that since he came, he was born. And so we celebrate his birthday. Whether it was that day or not that day, but we celebrate his birthday of the Lord Jesus Christ that he came. And for Christian community, it means a lot because his coming means salvation for us. His coming means joy. His coming means deliverance. His coming means rejuvenation in our spiritual work. And so he comes and born in a very humble situation, in a very humble circumstances. And this is what is we've just been reading that there are very many people, wherever they were in Bethlehem, and Mary, the mother, pregnant, and Joseph, they just had to go and find a place behind where he was born. Very humble, very humble circumstances, very humble conditions. And that's what he came to do, to look for those that were lowly, to look for those that were humble, to look for those that were nobodies in the background, and so he was born there. And so, the reason for the season, listen to me, the reason for this season is the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason for this season to celebrate his birth. And so the point in the entire thing is Jesus' birth. And that he came, that he took on himself the body, and in humility he left the divinity, came and dressed himself in this physical body and became man. And so we confess all these in the creeds that he became man and he lived among us. We saw his glory like a baby. He grew up here, a little boy. He grew up here. Is it obedience that little children should give to their parents? Yes, Jesus exhibited it and he came as a little boy. And moved around. And so we there's a song we sing and say that just like he was, children honor their parents. And Jesus was that he lived with them in obedience, helping them in the house, helping them here and there. So little boy Jesus Christ gave us an example. And we're going to look at a few things that we're going to celebrate about him. What did Joseph do? What did Mary do? What did the other, you know, accompanying people do? And so we are going to celebrate the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the very first thing, friends, that you and I celebrate on this Christmas, his birthday, his birthday is that we celebrate the love of God. We celebrate God's love. You know, God offering the best and giving his son to live glory coming on this earth and be born of a Virgin Mary. And so he came, Jesus came to deal with our ailments, to deal with our challenges, to deal with our troubles, to deal with our sicknesses, to deal with many, many things, stresses and disappointments. The reason why the key verse is John 3:16, that for God so loved the world. And you know that this is one of the, it is one of the most popular verses in the world, in the word of God. And so that God said gave his only one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that, that's what is a choice. Of course, like whoever believes, there are those who believe and there are those who don't believe. And so if you have made a choice to believe in him, we thank God. It's a choice. Whoever believes in him should not perish. Whoever. That word for me, it means a lot. And so for me, I don't enter argument with anybody who doesn't believe. The Bible gives you an option that whoever believes in him should not perish. And so this Christmas gives me that opportunity that I have chosen to be a Christian. I have chosen to be a Christian believer. Whoever believes in him should not perish. And so Christmas, you celebrate choice. You have made it. Thank you. And praise the Lord that you made that choice to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Praise the Lord that you chose to celebrate his birthday. Even when there are people who question whether he was born on this day or not, but for us, we know that one time, one day, one year, one month, he was born. And therefore, we celebrate his, his birthday. So God gives us this joy to celebrate the story of the heavenly redemption. 
heavenly redemption. We thank God that he does that. So friends, the entire thing that we are celebrating this Christmas is God is love. And God is love, the agape, which is selfless love. Of course, there are other loves that people that you know, that people know. There is physical love. There is, you know, um, the, the love between husband and wife, love between, you know, those loves are there. But this love that we celebrate, God is love, agape, the agapetos of God. It is selfless. It gives, but it doesn't count what it has given. God gave. He never counted what he had given. And so it is a challenge to us as we celebrate Christmas, friends, celebrate love among ourselves with our neighbors. The reason why I say love your neighbors, love yourself. You know, you, you, you love yourself and then go on and love your neighbor. God loved us. He gave his son to come and die, to come be born and then eventually die. That's a message. That's a message. Now, in this Christmas, this celebration, pray the Lord, brethren, that we celebrate family. We celebrate family. Pray the Lord. We celebrate family because here the characters that are very key in this Christian mess, Christmas message. One, God of God, God himself, and he had, you know, he sent um, the Holy Spirit and, you know, but we are celebrating Joseph. We are celebrating Mary. Mary was a wife. Joseph was a husband. And so we celebrate these two characters. Christmas message. And Joseph, why should we celebrate Joseph? Joseph had betrothed this woman, this young lady, Mary. And God had chosen, God's divine favor had fallen on Mary and she became the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, when you read on chapter 12, I mean, in, in Matthew, that actually he, he, Joseph, being righteous, said, mm, I would just give up this woman because maybe she's promiscuous until the angel of the Lord came and spoke to him in a dream. And therefore, value your dream time. When you're going to sleep, value your dream time because it was through the dream that actually this revelation came to Joseph. And he took this woman. And the Bible says actually they never united themselves and they never had this any sexual intercourse until after. Because actually that which was carrying into her was already, you know, God ordained and that was the message. And so Joseph never gave up this woman. In marriage, we need men who are like Joseph. I call upon all the men out there. Joseph gives us an example a humble man, servant of the Lord, who stayed in marriage with Mary, offering care, offering support, offering love. Praise the Lord. And so Joseph does us good. And we have just been reading in Luke here that Joseph went to register in his hometown along with Mary, offering help. And since they need to find a place, where she gives birth, it, they went and organized, Joseph organizes for the birth of the baby. I call upon the husbands. Joseph gives us an example. There are men who will tell their wives, go to the hospital, go, the doctors are there. Go and, you know, go and, you know, listen to me. Joseph went along with his wife. Now, those of you who are husbands, pray the Lord. Those that have done it, pray the Lord. Those that are yet to do it, pray the Lord. Those that have never done it, there's time to do it. I saw Joseph, we celebrate this Christmas. Uh, we are deciding to celebrate Joseph as well. Because actually he gives us an example as a loving, caring, supportive husband. And pray the Lord that actually he comes into picture for all the men to pick an example from. So men, praise the Lord that actually Joseph is here. Then we also celebrate Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Of course, um, she's venerated. Of course, she's honored. But we remember that she was a very key woman here. And one thing that actually I've just discovered again, that she was, she had a spiritual mindedness. She kept herself holy. She kept herself righteous. She is a model of intentional listening, which is a virtue that actually many people miss out. Wives miss out, 
husbands miss out. Listen, friends, Christmas brings us Mary, a model of intentional listening, a model of obedience. I pray that God who brought this season will speak to all women, like I've said, will speak to all men to pick something from this Christmas season. The man Joseph, whom I've talked about already, the woman Mary, whom we're talking about now, a model of intentional listening. And listening is a key thing in communication. Listening is very, very important between husband and wife. Listening is very, very important between persons, individuals, parents and children, colleagues at work, leaders and their led people. Now, listen to me. This is very, very important. Mary had intentions, intentional listening. And so we pray that actually this season, friends, God will raise up men and women who will transform their generations, who will bring something new, who will bring something fresh in their time. Joseph and Mary, because of their livelihood, God came visiting. Divine visitation landed into their house. Joseph was still talking with Mary. And here God had already purposed that a baby Jesus would come and be through Mary. And so we position ourselves that God visiting our generation, will he find you? Will he find me ready to shoulder the responsibility? Mary did, Joseph did, and so are you, and so am I. Very, very important message there. And so also, one other person, one other category, the people that come into picture of Christmas, celebrating were the wise men, popularly known as the wise men from the East. They are called astrologers, the people who studied the stars. And in Matthew chapter two, we read about them. They also come into picture and we celebrate them. I thought that we should celebrate wise men because they leave us an example. And one thing that I have discovered from scripture is we have lessons that we pick from every situation, from every scenario. We have individuals that we learn from, but we also have situations that arise and we learn from them because okay, they are worldly situations and we learn pick lessons. Now, these wise people, wise men that came from the East, the Bible talks about them. And in Matthew chapter 2, the Bible says, that actually they said, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the East came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who is born, who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it arose and have come to worship him. Now read on, read on, read on, read on. You'll see how they went to the king's palace asking and you will see how the decree also was passed to kill all the baby boys because the wise men dodged going back to Herod's palace because actually if he had gone, then he would have actually known where the baby was and he would have gone to kill them, to kill the baby. And so God warned them again in the dream. I emphasize again during this Christmas season, be mindful of your dream time. When you go to sleep, the wise men paid keen attention in that dream and they listened to the voice of God. Joseph listened to the voice of God in the dream again. And he told, God told Joseph, take the baby and the mother and run away because Herod is coming. Dream time. In chapter two of Matthew, I dedicate it to you to read and find these things. So this is important. These wise men from the East led by the star. The men left their home. Point number one there. They left their home. Why did they leave their home? They came to see baby born Jesus Christ, the Savior. Pray the Lord. Now, there are things that we give up for God's work. 
we leave our, the comfort of our houses, the comfort of our homes, the comfort of our villages, and we go out. Now, these wise men leave us a lesson. And they did come empty-handed. The Bible said that they came carrying gifts. We celebrate the gifts that the wise men brought. And the Bible said that they brought gold. Gold is Jesus' royalty, the kingship. Gold, they brought a gift, kingship, royalty. They also brought incense. Incense was served among priesthood. The priests were the ones that burnt incense to God. And so they brought a gift, and then the second gift was incense. And incense was his divinity, representing his, because actually he burnt towards for God. And then they also brought mar, which is his mortality as a human being, as a man. Jesus, divine, Jesus, man. And so they brought this gift. And what does it mean? They witnessed the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ with gifts sharing gifts with other people now friends this is a season christmas is a season for sharing 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 what god had blessed you with that's the reason why i'm told the story of boxing day is um, um those of you who know it better know it better but i'm told this boxing day that we celebrate is for opening the boxes gift gift boxes that were given to you on Christmas Day. So 26th is Boxing Day. You sit down and open and check and see. Pray the Lord that I'm going to share gifts with other people. Praise the God that actually you have. You're sending someone. He's sending something to your parents, something to your friends, something to your, pr your brothers and sisters, something to the needy, something, something. And in the church, you get there and celebrate and giving gifts. Pray the Lord. And this is important. That actually celebrate Christmas, but with this in mind, that the wise man gives us an example. And so we celebrate them. We celebrate the wise people, wise men from the East, that they came. They lived. We, if we had all the time, we would talk about very many things about them. But this is a very, very important point that I have to make. And also celebrate. Final thing that I'm going to talk about is the shepherds. When you get back to the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 18 to 8, 8, verse 8 to 20, there's a huge lesson. There's a huge lesson of celebration there. The Bible says that Jesus was being born in the manger in, in Bethlehem. There were people who were taking care of their sheep in the wilderness, out there, in the wild, at night. And these people were called shepherds. And when you read this Luke chapter 2 verse 8, you'll find that actually these people are taking care of their sheep. And in the midst of taking care, angel comes and pronounces the good news to them that, Behold, in Bethlehem a Savior is born. And they said, what is this? But these people, the shepherds, were taking care of their sheep to ensure that they have enough food, to ensure that they are secure, to ensure that they are well guarded and protected. And so they were taking care of their sheep. Praise the Lord. And so this is a lesson of care that the shepherds were giving to their sheepfolds. And they show commitment. But also, the attributes of Jesus Christ as a good shepherd, praise the Lord. In John chapter 10, he talks about a good shepherd. I mean, a good shepherd. Now, be a good shepherd to your children. Be a good shepherd to your people. Be a good shepherd. Jesus himself, we celebrate a good shepherd on Christmas Day. So, willing to die for the sheep. Celebrate good shepherdhood. Celebrate care. Celebrate love. Celebrate protection. These people, we read about the shepherds. But also leaving their sheep to go and see Jesus. It is because Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And if we had all the time, we'll talk about this very, very important topic. But I bring a little for you that these shepherds, we need it to be celebrated because it was their Christmas. It was on this Christmas that actually they show us very great example of care, but also Jesus Christ himself as a good shepherd. And now, lastly, I share this from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the portion of scripture that we read all the time on Christmas Day. And it's what I leave with you, that as I wish you a Merry Christmas, a Merry celebration during this season, chapter Chapter 9, verse 6 of Isaiah is what I end with. And the Bible says, For to us 
a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. My prayer is that this name becomes evident to you during this Christmas season, that as you wind it up and enter into the new year, the peace of the Lord will be with you because he's the Prince of Peace. And may he remain with you and may all of us. And Merry Christmas to you all as you celebrate, celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ, but also these people leave us examples to live by. Remember Mary, remember Joseph, remember the wise men, and remember the shepherds. And But to us, a child is born, the Prince of Peace. And may the Prince of Peace remain with you in the name of Jesus Christ, the same. Amen.